Shalom everybody, we're starting the counting of the Omar today on this day. Baruch Atah Yehua, Eloheinu Melech Olam, Atsher Kitshanu B'mitzvota V'tzivanu Al Sefirat HaOmer Hayam Yom Shmoni. Blessed are you, Yehua Lua, King of the Universe, who's commanded us to count the Omer on this day, day 8. Shalom, beloveds of the King. So praise Abba Yahuwah. Yes, we are continuing with our counting of the Omar and we are on chapter 10 of Yeremiahu. And so we continue to read. Hear the word which Yahuwah speaks to you, O house of Yisrael. Thus says Yahuwah, do not learn the way of the nations and do not be awed by the signs of the heavens, for the nations are awed by them. So this is very interesting. Do not learn the ways of the nations. So you see, we are not to be following the ways of the nations. We are not to be following the signs and the wonders of the nations. But yet at the end of the day, the nations give us their plans. The nations give us their pharmakia. And what do we do? We follow. And we are awed by all the things that they want to give us for us to be able to follow. And then people want to follow signs and wonders, all these signs and wonders. We don't want to learn the ways of the Father, but we want to be able to follow signs and wonders in the heavens and signs and wonders that people do. And yet, isn't it amazing? Father did the greatest signs and wonders through the Israelites in their midst, for the Israelites. And yet, did those signs and wonders get them to really follow him the, the way that they should? There was no group of people that saw more signs and wonders than what they did. They saw the ten plagues. They saw how he parted the Red Sea. They saw how he gave them quail and manna from heaven and supernaturally he fed them. He gave them water to drink. He was a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night with the signs and the wonders that he gave. Yet, the people did not serve him. And so at the end of the day, we are not to be a people that are just led by signs and wonders. We are to be led by the Ruach of Yahuwah. For the laws of these people are worthless. For one cuts a tree from the forest, work of the hand of a craftsman with a cutting tool. Hmm. And here's our little Christmas trees. They beautify it with silver and gold. They strengthen it with nails and hammers so that it does not topple. Well, our little Christmas trees and we hang our little balls on it and we hang our little decorations on it and we will worship these little trees and what we're doing is all part of the pagan worship that comes back to Tammuz, that comes back to Nimrod, that comes back to Semiramis, that comes back to this very tree that sits there will be a phallus, and we put little balls on it that has to do with all these sexual things, but we will do it. And we'll say, oh no, you know, even though the Christians are Christians and they know that these things are wrong, but it's not about the Christmas thing, it's about bringing Jesus into the Christmas thing. And so we want to justify our rebellion. And we want to justify our customs and our traditions. And so we learn the ways of the nations and what the nations have done and what the nations have taught. And now it's so scary because even in the land of Israel, this year, more than any other year, this December last year, my goodness, it was festivities of Christmas all over the place that even in, I think it was in Natanya, they had this big, huge Christmas tree with all these other symbols that was with it of the different religions, but it's all these religions coming together with all their pagan things. And this is why he says, do not learn the ways of the nations. And so these customs and these pagan customs and traditions that we have been about, Father is saying it is a stench in my nostrils. But we continue. Because oh, what about the children? And how do you stop this? Verse 5, they are like rounded post. They are like a rounded post and they do not speak. They have to be carried because they do not walk. Do not be afraid of them for they do no evil. 
nor is it in them to do any good. So you see, and then we put our trust and our faith in all our worthless idols that we serve and all our idolatrous ways and all of this is nothing but whoring before the Father. We whore before the Father in the things that we do. We are the prostitutes before him. We prostitute him with our customs and our traditions. And we don't see any evil in it. And so verse 6 says, And there is none like you, O Yahuwah. You are great, and great is your name in might. Who would not fear you, O sovereign of the nations? For this is your due. For among all the wise men of the nations, and in all their reigns, there is none like you. You see, there is none like Yahuwah. There's no one like him. There is no one like our Messiah, who is the only one who leads the way in which we should walk. They are both brutish and foolish, an instruction of worthlessness in the tree. Still going on about this tree. Silver is beaten into plates, and it is brought from Tarshish, and gold from Uphaz, the work of the craftsman and the hands of the smith, draped in blue and purple. All of them are work of skilled ones. But Yahuwah is truly Alua. He is the living Alua and the everlasting sovereign. All his wrath, the, at all his wrath, the earth shakes and nations are unable to stand his displeasure. So we must understand the Father doesn't look lightly upon these things. And this is the problem. We keep excusing ourselves to continue in our wicked ways to say, well, he will just turn a blind eye to it. You know, why would he do anything? But yet at the end of the day, the Bible has been put there to be able to show us that he's not going to turn a blind eye to it forever because if he was going to judge his own set-apart nation, what makes us think that we are any different? And this is the fallacy that we are under to believe, well, I've received your sure. And now that I've received Yahshua, he's the righteousness of Yahuwah, and I don't need to do anything. Well, if he's righteous, then that means I should be walking in righteousness. If he's set apart, then that means I need to walk in set apartness. If he is set apart, then I need to be set apart. But we have this understanding that Yahshua has done everything and I need to do nothing. But yet, the scripture says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Why is that? Because we cannot continue in our wicked, evil ways. Say to them this, the Elah that did not make the heavens and the earth shall perish from the earth and from under these heavens. So every single idolatrous thing that has been formulated to take the place of Abba Yahuwah is going to fall to the ground. Like he said to me in that one prophetic word, I want truth in the innermost parts, my child. I desire truth in the innermost parts. And everything that is not of truth is not going to stand. Everything of your religious systems that's not truth is not going to stand because these things are not going to stand. He has made the earth by his power. He has established the world by his wisdom and has stretched out the heavens by his understanding. And so you see, we are called to know him. We are called to be able to come and understand his ways of his word and to understand that his ways are or his righteous ways is righteous. And even though we might not understand it, we are to trust him and believe that he's the one who will lead us in the right way. And we are to be able to know him. And to know him is to understand that his ways are not our ways. And to understand that there is a way that seems right unto man, but its way will land up in death. And he is the one that is going to shake the heavens and the earth so that they may understand that he is the creator. He is the one that is I am. He is Yahuwah, who is the creator of the world. When he makes his voice heard, there is roaring of waters in the heavens. 
and he makes vapors rise from the ends of the earth. The lighting, lightnings for rain he has made and brings wind from his treasuries. And even today, as we were reading in Revelation chapter 4, we see that there is fire and there's lightning and there is this sound of a shofar all around his throne and there is all of this voice of this shofar and these living creatures and it is like he appeared when he appeared to them on Mount Sinai with thunder and lightning and with the sound of a shofar. Everyone is brutish in knowledge. Every smith is put to shame by his idol, for his molded image is falsehood, and there is no spirit in them. So basically everything that is idolatrous that we've put our faith and our trust in, as opposed, as opposed to looking to Yahuwah as the only one that we are to put our faith and our trust in, is all going to crumble, and it's all going to be shown to be falsehood in the end. So all our customs and our religions and our traditions are all going to turn to be falsehood in the end when he's exposing it for what it is. And whatever it is that we want to put our faith and our trust in is not going to stand in the days ahead as everything will be shaken. And it will all turn to be worthless in the end because imagine these people that have only followed a religion that is telling them, for example, that they are not going to go through anything, that they're not going to go through any destruction, that they're not going to have to go through any hardships. And then when all of this comes along, who are the first ones that are going to bow their knee to the systems? Which is already what is happening at the moment. People are bowing their knees to this world system. They are worthless, a work of mockery. In the time of their punishment, they perish. The portion of Yaakov is not like these, for he is the maker of all. And Israel is the tribe of his inheritance. Yahuwah of hosts is his name. So we must understand he is the maker of Israel. And because he's the maker, he's the one who's going to bring them into destruction because he has brought them forth, not to continue in their idolatrous ways. He brought us forth in order to deliver us and set us free. Yahushua has come to deliver us from our wicked way, from our sinful, treacherous ways of our flesh. And where we were disobedient, rebellious children to bring us back into the Father's ways and into the, father, the Father's order. Gather up your bundle from the ground you who live under siege. Sure. So imagine they go, we, the time is coming, we will basically be living under siege. For thus said Yahuwah, see, at this time I'm hurling out the inhabitants of the land and shall distress them so that they feel it. Mm. Sure. So there is distress that's going to come upon the people that they will start to feel it so that their knee will start to bow. It's interesting how many f people felt the distress at the beginning of 2020 when we were in these lockdowns and people felt the distress of when their idols were being taken away from them. And now two years down the line, where are we now? Where are we now when everything starts lifting and now it's again peace all around us? And where are the people now? Have we forgotten what we've been through? Have we forgotten our Lua, the one that we were turning to? All the prayers that we were turning to at the time of when we were in lockdown and all of a sudden there's no work and there's no, no, you know, there's no freedom, there's nothing and we feel, we feel deprived and we feel constrained and I just saw it as a time of being in the cleft of the rock but some people felt so confined and their freedom taken away from them. But at the end of the day, Father wanted us to Turn our eyes from the things that have grown, that has made him grow strangely dim and put our eyes back on him. Take your eyes from the things of the world, put your eyes back on him because he's the only one that is going to be the one to lead us in the days ahead. Woe to me for my breaking. My wound is grievous, but I say, this is my sickness and I bear it. 
My tent has been ravaged, and all my cords have been broken. My children have gone from me, and they are no more. There is no one to pitch up tent anymore, or to set up my curtains. Sure. And then there we go again. Verse 21, there's like almost not even a chapter that goes by that the father doesn't speak about the shepherds and the, and the prophets. For the shepherds have become brutish and they have not sought Yahuwah. Therefore, they did not understand and all their flocks scattered. So you see, because the shepherds did not seek Yahuwah, they could not warn the people. And they're telling the people, don't worry, it's all peaceful. Well, nothing is going to happen to you if you're going to go and take this, this V thing. It's okay, bow down to it. At least you're going to come to church. The Father is not going to do anything to you. So the shepherds are no longer hearing the voice of the Father because the shepherds have become hirelings, most of them, because it's about making sure that I keep my structure going, making sure that I keep my, m the things that I have formulated going. But the Father's going to bring it all to a standstill. And how sad it is that he says, the shepherds have become brutish and they have not sought Yahuwah. And so you see, if, if the prophets are not truly seeking Yahuwah, or the shepherds or the leaders not seeking Yahuwah, then what kind of messages are they giving the people? What kind of messages? Just another message for the sake of giving a message? Just another teaching for the sake of giving a teaching because I want to be able to elate myself with my puffed up ministry? What are we doing? Or are we actually seeking the Father to find out what is on the Father's heart so that the people can hear what the Father wants to say? So you know, it's not only just the responsibility of the prophet. But the shepherds are supposed to be the priests that are also supposed to hear from the Father in order to be able to bring a word to the people because at the end of the day, they need to shepherd the flock. Are you shepherding the flock right into the hands of the wolves? Or well, how are we shepherding the flock? See, it came the voice of a report and a great shaking out of the land of the north to make the cities of Yehuda a waste a habitation of jackals. So you see, is there now, there's now an uproaring going on in the north. There is in the north a big uproaring going on. O oh, Yahuwah, I know the way of man is not in himself. It is not for man who walks to direct his own steps. Is it not for man who walks to direct his own steps? So you see, this is the problem. You see, man has come to the place of I will direct my own steps. I will go my own way. So you see, I know the, ma the way of man is not in himself. Not in, it is not for man who walks to direct his own steps. It says, um, trust in Yahuwah with all your, with all your might and Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6. Trust in Yahuwah. Let me get this right. Trust in Yahuwah with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. If I am quoting it right. Let's go to Proverbs Because this is just coming up in my spirit now, this Proverbs. And the thing is that many times we try and rely on our own understanding. And we make our own plans. And we set our own path. And the Father is telling us not to, not to be able to put our... So, there, Proverbs 3, verse 5. Trust in Yahuwah with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Know him in all your ways. So you see, we are to know him in all our ways and he will make your paths straight. So you see, even when we do not understand, when we trust him, he will make our paths straight. Even when we do not understand that which he is doing. Do not lean on your own understanding. 
Let us continue to read. Oh, Yahuwah, chastise me. Sure. And this was my cry last night when I was reading this, and it was, Oh, Yahuwah, chastise me, but with right ruling, not in your displeasure, lest you bring me to naught. So you see, he's giving us time to repent so that he doesn't have to bring his judgments upon us, so that he doesn't have to be able to judge us in his displeasure. So if we humble ourselves, it says, humble yourselves before the mighty, yeah, resist the evil and he will resist the devil and he will flee from you. We are to humble ourselves before him and allow him to chastise us and rebuke us. So when we come to him and we seek his place and he rebukes us, it is better that he rebuke us while we still can repent than his displeasure to come against us and bring us into naught, into destruction completely. Pour out your wrath on the nations who do not know you. Sure, imagine. This is Jeremiah having to pray this. Pour out your wrath on the nations who do not know you and on the tribes who do not call on your name. For they have eaten up Yaakov, devour him and consume him and, and laid waste his home. Understand, Jeremiah had to pray what the Father wanted him to pray. Jeremiah had to speak what the Father wanted him to speak. And he's calling forth Father's wrath on the nations. But at the end of the day, his judgment came on upon Israel too, because they would not repent. So may Abba bless you all. Shalom, shalom.